following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're very happy to have you here. It is a, you know, getting close to a new year. Um, we've got a lot that's going on in the college football world. Very exciting time for most teams, for at least for a lot of teams. Even if you're just a fan, I think it's still exciting for you because there's a lot of bowl games to be had. And we were just talking about it before hopping on here. How many opt outs there are with these bowls and trying to keep up with them and trying to trying to remember that there are certain teams with opt outs, but then also an opt out on the other side. <laughs> That kind of may may even the playing field. It may take away from one side more than the other. There's a lot going on with this, but we're still going to talk about these bowl games. We're going to start off with with some non New Year's Six bowl games and kind of go down through the list. Some of them that are going on for Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, uh, kind of going into the new year. But none of the New Year's Six bowl games because we were going to try to cover that on Saturday morning with you guys. So uh, we're going to get into it. But before we do, we first want to mention our sponsor for this episode, and that is SeatGeek, because maybe you are wanting to get some tickets to go to one of these games, or maybe you're just a simple fan of live events, whether it be theater or music or sports, whatever the case may be, SeatGeek is the app and it is the place to go. You can go to SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app and use code R2TO and get yourself an amazing $20 off your purchase. SeatGeek is so amazing because you go right into the app or you go to the website and you can search around for the best deals very easily because it gives you an entire layout of the arena or wherever you're going and you can pick your seats and you know exactly which seats you're getting before you purchase them. And on top of that, they make it very easy with a color coding system where there's green, yellow, and red. Red meaning the not such a great deal. Yellow is a is an average deal and green is the best deal. You want to search for those green dots. That's how it's going to hook you up with an amazing deal. SeatGeek is the absolute best uh, when it comes to purchasing tickets. So we encourage you guys to go over to SeatGeek.com or using the SeatGeek app and use code R2TO for $20 off. It's an amazing deal, an amazing site, the easiest way to get your tickets. So again, go to SeatGeek.com or the SeatGeek app and use code R2TO for $20 off. But let me go ahead and bring in both of my co-hosts. We Yes, we have all three of us here today. I've got Blake Lane and Jeremy here in the studio with me. I guess Blake uh, kind of virtually in the studio with me. Uh, how you guys doing? What's up? What's up? Glad to be here, man. Uh, just ready to talk some bowl games, college football coming down to an end. And, you know, it it sucks, but uh, I feel like there's some great games ahead of us. And, you know, the playoffs coming up next week and, and uh, I'm excited, man. Yeah. 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 I think coming down to the playoffs, that's obviously the one that we're most excited about, but there's still some, some other sneaky good ones in there. No, yeah, no, there's still some sneaky games that we're not going to be talking about. Like we were just talking before we went live, the Virginia tech two lane game yeah. and that one, the Virginia tech pulled off the win. I think it was 41 to 20 was the final. I could be wrong, but I mean, I was thinking that this is going to be a pretty even or like close game between these two teams, but well, I, I didn't get a chance to watch the last quarter, but looks like Virginia Tech definitely let, didn't let off the gas pedal and just kept rolling on to victory. And it's cool to see a team like that with not the greatest record compared to Tulane. I think they only lost two games this year than yeah. Virginia Tech. I mean, I think they were, <clears throat> excuse me, I think six they were and like six, yeah, coming six in, I and think. six. Yeah, and, I mean, um, it, it's, that's amazing too, thinking back to some of the drama that went on in the offseason with that school. Mm-hmm. So really happy for for them being able to pull out a victory and, yeah. and, and earn that victory in a bowl game. That, that's one of those bowl games that, yeah, it's not, it's not the greatest bowl. Uh, what was that, the – Military bowl bowling. Yeah. Yeah, The go bowling military bowl. I think it was. So it's not like a big time bowl game that you would think, you know, is is the most prestigious bowl game you can make it to. But Mm -hmm. for both of these schools being able to make it there and that's the fun part of bowling, you know, of going to a bowl game. Uh, And so we're going to talk quite a bit about these opt outs and Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's becoming something different with all these guys opting out. And, you know, I, I can understand trying to save yourself and not, not get injured, but you, you already played, what, 12, 13 games, most of these guys? Mm-hmm. What What is that yeah. one more game for you? You know, and, and why not go and, you know, th- this is this is also an opportunity for you to go and show what you can do on the, on the in the brightest lights, you know, and going and earning a trophy for your team. And it's it's for the school after you leave. I think there's a lot to go into. And we're going to talk about some of these these teams. I think some of them have more to win than others, obviously. Um, and, and we're going to get to some of those kind, kind of like Virginia Tech. I think they had a lot more to win in that bowl game than Tulane did. Tulane had a, you know 11 win season. That's an amazing season. But going on to win that, and then of course I, I think even tonight, uh, you know you see USC and, and Louisville going on tonight, uh, which would be last night for everybody watching now because we pre-record these. But 
uh, you know, it, with with that game, I, I think that shows a lot. I, I think this is this is one that you see a lot of guys leave USC, a lot of guys leaving that for the transfer portal, uh, and then of course with Louisville and e- even some guys there that are opting out of that bowl game. And uh, for both of these teams, I think it's kind of crazy because you have an opportunity to to kind of pull in recruits with this bowl game. You have an opportunity to turn the page. You know, you think of USC and how terrible their season was, seven wins on the season. So going into to a bowl game, being able to win that, I think that could kind of turn your your season around. Definitely. Uh, kind of end it on a high note at the very yeah. least. And you got guys opting out. And and that's just, I don't know, that's a shame. Uh, it's not it's not the college football that we grew up in, uh, you know, whenever we were, we were young whippersnappers. So, uh, you know, especially for Blake, he remembers way back in the day. Blake, are we at least pronouncing Louisville right, or is it Louisville? No, it's Louisville. Okay. Louisville. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, Guys, I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm a huge Auburn fan, and in in 2004, I remember we went undefeated, and we were left out of the national championship game. Uh, It was an absolute travesty. Um, you know, Josh, I know you probably disagree, but uh, I feel like we would have put up a much better fight against the USC Trojans. Um, I, I, can't, I can't argue with yeah, that. Yeah, you can't argue with and, that. And, you know, I, I can't imagine <laughs> the guys on that Auburn team sitting out in a bowl game because we went to the Sugar Bowl, we played Virginia Tech, we were undefeated. And I just look back in 2004. Like, like that's only that's only 19 years ago, okay? Like coming up on 20 years. Like like come on now, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago. And we've made this big jump to where we've gotten so soft. And kids just want to opt out left and right, man, and I'm just like I can't imagine that team and all those dogs on that 04 Auburn team pulling up and saying, "You know what? We didn't make it to the national championship." We're just not going to play in the Sugar Bowl, man. Like, who cares about the undefeated season? We're just not going to play. I, I, and, it, and it's the same way if you go 7-5. and five. Like, Caleb Williams, I know you're a top draft pick. Guess what? Bryce Young, he played last year because he said, guess what? I owe it to my teammates because this is a brotherhood, all right? We're a family. We, we fight every day at practice. We blood, sweat, and tears, man. And you sit out. In the last game, like this is your last college football game ever in your career, and you're you're gonna skip it? Like that's insane, man. I just we've we've just fallen off the face of the earth in a 20 year span. Where I get it, you're gonna go make millions of dollars. I understand, I completely get it, but I just I don't know. I. I I couldn't imagine that 04 Auburn team and, and Cadillac Williams looking at us and the Auburn faithful and saying, you know what? I'm just going to sit out, man. I'm going to be a top, I'm going to be a top 10 uh, pick in, in the NFL. And, you know, I'm going to go make my money. So hate it for you, but I'm out. I just, it doesn't sit right with me, man. No, I'm right there with you, man. I mean, going back, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of bowl games. I can remember back, uh, I'm trying to think of the year. It's whenever Landry Jones took over for Sam Bradford for Oklahoma. And in Oklahoma, I had a down year. I think we had like eight wins, maybe seven or eight wins. And we went to the Sun Bowl. And in the two years prior to that, of course, I think, uh, you know, we, we had lost a couple. Uh, I think the, the two years prior was whenever we lost to Florida in the national championship. Uh, and then the, the year after, I can't remember who it was, but we lose again. And then I remember going to the Sun Bowl and Oklahoma fans were just craving for a win. And all, all the guys go there and they, they fought hard for a win. You see every single one of those those starters, regardless of, of whether they had an NFL draft stock or not, they all made it and, and went to that bowl game in a Sun Bowl. Who no, nobody really cares. If you're an Oklahoma fan, nobody really cares about a Sun Bowl victory, but just that win to end the season there. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a, a whole lot more that goes into it. Um, but you know, talking about Oklahoma, let's start off with Oklahoma and Arizona. Uh, looking at this, the one thing when we talk about opt outs, uh, the one thing I can give to I think Brent Venables and the coaching staff there is the only two guys that are opting out of this game outside of transfers, obviously, are uh, two of the linemen. You've got Guyton and. Uh, Rame. Those are the only two opt outs. You're going to see, uh, you're, you're going to see Jackson Arnold step in first start ever for him, uh, as an Oklahoma Sooner. So that's really big to see him step into that stage. I think you're a, a guy you're going to want to watch out for 
is uh, Drake Stoops. Uh, this is his last time putting on that Sooners uniform. That he is a legend around Norman, and he always will be. Uh, and and he started off a legend because of his dad. Uh, so you know, seeing Stoops, I think that's going to be one guy to watch out for. And then you know, you've got guys like Farouk, uh, Jaleel Farouk, and you've got uh, other guys like Sawchuk, and you've got uh, over on the defensive side, you've got Billy Bowman and Ethan Downs. And uh, Danny Stutzman, uh, the communion. Uh, so you know you've got yeah. you've got all these guys coming, and, and they're stepping in there. That's that's one thing I'm really proud of for the, for this team because they, they went through last season. All, all these guys went through last season together. Uh, you know, outside of the the young guys who weren't on the team yet, but they remember that. Uh, they remember what what that felt like to only have six wins, go and fight really hard against a really good Florida State team, uh, which really you had no no. Uh, no, business. no business being there to go against Florida State in that game, but whatever. They put you there anyways. You went and fought, fought your heart out, came down to the wire. Uh, you, you you had a chance to win that game. So And then turn that around from a six-win season on to being able to push it to 11 this year. Uh, so I think that's a really big movement for them. And then over on Arizona side, I was trying to look it up uh, just a minute ago, and I don't really see too many uh, opt-outs, again, outside of the transfers that they've had. So this is a, a, this is one of the games I think you can see it's going to feel more like a true game. You're, you're going to have an offensive line for Oklahoma that's going to look a lot different. Uh, and then over on Arizona, I think you're going to have an Arizona team that wants to win this game because – they started off. Who who picked Arizona uh, to to go as far as they did, having nine wins this year? No, I'm just you know, I, I, I think if if we backed up, I don't remember. We'll have to back up and check out all the the conference uh, it, it, the guesses that we had on the records and everything, kind of the predictions. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think we, I know I've, I'm pretty sure I guessed under on whatever yeah. Arizona had. There was no mm-hmm. chance that Arizona was coming out with nine wins, six wins maybe, but nine wins. So uh, it's, it's going to be a really fun game, I think. Uh, and and it, it's, it shocks me a little bit that Oklahoma's a two and a half point underdog right now. It started off at three and a half. So now working its way to two and a half because I think they're starting to see some guys opting into the bowl game, <coughs> mm-hmm. uh, kind of figuring all that out. But uh, I guess, Jeremy, going over to you for this game for Oklahoma, Arizona and the Alamo Bowl. How do you see this game going? Before I get into that, when you were talking about the list of key Oklahoma players or just the entire roster, I don't know who the Stoops guys. I know Stoops. <laughs> that's all that I know of. But um, no, this is going to be a really fun game, I think, for Oklahoma, obviously. Between everybody that's – this is their final hoorah, like you guys have obviously said, and then you got to go make the most of it, go make your dreams, and make the make everything out of it just because, like, as Blake and Eminem said, you only get one shot like this. So, I mean <laughs> – it's it's definitely going to be fun. Oklahoma's definitely – we've talked about what Oklahoma has to do, and we got to let their defense and just be smart with the situation just because we're used to seeing that empty backfield in that, in that necessary sense for Oklahoma, and that's going to be a, a big crucial thing for Oklahoma's defense and just get that shut down. Then let – let the offense just do its thing. Let Stoops and let everybody else do their do their job and just put points on the board. Now, looking for Arizona, like you obviously said, we were not expecting this one single ounce of Arizona. And they've definitely gone to prove all of us wrong, to say the least. But they've been they've been a really strong group this year. So I think it I think it's gonna be a good quarterback battle. And the defense, I still obviously want to see Oklahoma pull this off. Then if I didn't, I think you might have killed me at the end of the episode. But um, looking at it, I think it's going to be a really fun game. But still, at the end of the day, I want to see Oklahoma pull this off and just have a really good end of the year. Yeah, and it's, it's hard making <clears throat> predictions uh, whenever it comes into a bowl game yeah. where you've got so many opt-outs. I think this is one of the bowl games where I think you can look at the regular season and kind of compare that to mm-hmm. what's coming out of in, into the bowl game just because you've got uh, a lot of the returning players really on both sides. Uh, yeah. Again, the only uh, outstanding, uh, yeah, kind of the outlier there is the offensive line is going to look a lot different. And then uh, Dylan Gabriel is not at quarterback, but Jackson Arnold, if he lives up to the hype, that shouldn't be much uh, much of a difference there. Mm-hmm. But Blake, how are you feeling about this Alamo Bowl game? Uh, first, I want to say uh, congratulations to the Arizona Wildcats on one hell of a season. This is a team that lost to Mississippi State earlier in the year in overtime, and they completely turned their season around. I uh, had some big time key victories on the schedule uh, and they end up finishing the year ranked in the top 25. So congratulations to them. I know that program's not far off from going like one and 11 uh, a couple years ago. So uh, it's, it's big time to see them in a bowl game against a quality opponent like the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, first thing I'll say is Dylan Gabriel, 
a uh, heck of a career, everything you've done. Now he goes to Oregon, and it's the Jackson Arnold era at, at Oklahoma. And I think this is going to be the biggest matchup in the game is can Jackson Arnold move the football against this Arizona secondary? Uh, they've been kind of sketchy uh, in, in a couple of games, and I know the Pac-12 offenses, they sling it around the yard and everything. Uh, but Arizona gives up like 240 yards through the air per game. It's something close to that. Um, and and they've been sketchy at times. So is, is Venables going to – open it up and let Jackson Arnold roll with it and, and let him, you know, make his case for next year. And, um, or is he going to shut it down? Oklahoma going to try to, you know, uh, slimy this thing up. Are they going to run the football or how is this going to go? I think, I think BV is going to open it up and let him, let him showcase it. I think this is the game where you want to look towards next year and see what you got at the quarterback position and see what kind of young pieces you got around him. You're moving to the Southeastern conference. Uh, and, and, you know, I think Oklahoma's defense is, you know, I think they're going to, I think they're going to stand tall against Arizona and they're going to make enough plays. The biggest thing with Oklahoma's defense, man, is you got to get off the field on third downs. All right. It, it started happening again this year where you would see third and a mile and Oklahoma would give it up. Uh, some missed tackles and just it, it's been it's been the kryptonite for Oklahoma uh, for years, man. It, it just feels like they they've had the offenses to win national championships, but their defenses just can't get off the field on third and long. And you know, the, I, the good I think thing is we've we've got three guys left on the the starting defense right now that are still from Lincoln Riley's recruitments. Uh, and the funny thing is they're they're the three guys that you you still want there too. Because uh, you've got Danny Stetsman, Ethan Downs, and Billy Bowman, so you got three guys there that those are the last of of that Lincoln Riley defense. So that that's Man. that's one thing, I guess. Alex Grinch defense, if you want to throw that in the mix. So just, it, it has it, improved a lot this year, but yeah, there's definitely been some key moments and key games. That's why you lost against Kansas because you just couldn't shut them down and make the tackles in the open field. That's why you lost to Oklahoma State because uh, you just couldn't make the key tackles when it really mattered the most and when it came down to to it. And so. Yeah, there's there's definitely some moments like that, and I, I do think kind of going to your 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 point, I do think BV will uh, let Jackson Ar- Arnold open up. You saw that in the BYU mm-hmm. game when he stepped in when Dylan Gabriel went down with an injury in the second half, so he he stepped in, and there was one play where he stepped up to the line, looked around, and as a freshman QB who probably doesn't even really have the authority so much to do so, stepped in and called an audible on his own and hurried up and snapped the ball. Uh, that, that's that's the kind of guts that he has. I think he's got the mentality and and the uh, overall just confidence in himself. And so I, I do think you'll see the offense open up quite a bit and just be the normal offense. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we won't have Tawi Walker. He transferred out, uh, and so I, I don't believe he's going to be in the game. Uh, I guess I, if, if I remember correctly, he's still in the transfer portal. I don't know if he's committed anywhere yet. But uh, So you're going to have to lean on Sawchuck. Uh, and I'm not sure what other uh, we've got a freshman too, and I can't remember his name. But you know, you see, you've got you've got some guys that uh, you know that that I, I think they're going to put their trust in pretty much everybody over there. But just, it's just hopefully they can make a field goal. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I think I think that for this defense, I think that's the biggest the biggest aspect that you're really looking forward to with this Oklahoma team. Uh, you know, what what can that defense do against a Pac-12 offense? Let's not let's not pretend like. You know, this is an offense that can't move the ball because they have been a pretty good offense and they've they've won nine nine games for a good reason and came close to teams like Washington. Uh, so, you know, just looking at this Arizona team, I do think it's going to be a task for this defense to slow them down. They've had how many weeks off as well. So you haven't had that that game time, you know, kind of get sure. yourself prepared. So you got to jump right back into it. So it's going to be a fun one. But uh, is, is anyone, anyone picking Arizona to win this bowl game? No. No, I, I'm personally kind of shocked that they have Arizona winning in, in, in Vegas. Because what did you say? The, st- the two and a half right now is the last last I saw on the spread. So they're a two and a half point favorite expected to win by a field goal. I just I don't see that happening. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be a good football game. But I think Oklahoma, you know, I just think roll with it. I, I think it's going to be similar to what you saw with Oklahoma versus Oregon a couple years back in the in the Alamo Bowl, where you have an Oklahoma team that rolls in that ha- has something to to move forward with, and uh, they go in there and, and just kind of steamroll to start off and come away with an easy win. But 
it, it does it does keep it, it close. You know, it, it's going to be one of those games where Oklahoma keeps the momentum and wins it easy in, in that aspect. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, Arizona yeah. keeps keeps themselves in the game. Definitely. But let's go over. Uh, we've got the Fenway Bowl, SMU against Boston College. Uh, this is one that looking looking at this one, I'm more I'm more interested in SMU having SMU coming to this game. Um, with with SMU, they don't I, I don't see any big opt outs with this one. I think both of these team teams would be pretty happy to be where they're at here in the postseason, making it to a bowl game. Uh, let alone with with SMU. Uh, you know, sitting here, they're looking really good this season. Uh, you know, they had the loss to Oklahoma and then one other loss on the season. I don't know who their second loss is on, on this season. But, you know, SMU has had a very good season, looked really good all year long. So seeing them, they do, uh, they are going to be without their their starting quarterback, Preston Stone. Uh, he went down with a broken leg in his last game of the season. Mm. So that is one key piece that they're going to be without. But they do have a freshman quarterback, Kevin Jennings, coming in. Uh, and so they're they're kind of kind of lean on him, and then uh, you know looking over at the other side, you've got Boston College, who has played in some close games with teams like Florida State uh, and got themselves to a bowl game. But outside of that, I don't I don't really see too much with with Boston College uh, being able to stick in this game. So personally, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick SMU to win this game. I think they've had a really good season, looking at everything they've been able to put together. Uh, so I'm gonna ride with that. Uh, Blake, who you got? I'm going to take SMU as well, man. The SMU Mustangs, a shout-out to Rhett Lashley, former offensive coordinator for my Auburn Tigers. Uh, his first conference championship uh, for SMU and and uh, just bringing that program, really just getting it back to, to the dominant level that it used to be uh, back in the Pony Express days. You know, they're winning 10, 11 games a year and uh, just super competitive and playing in, you know, a, a – you know, not a huge bowl, but uh, they're getting the TV exposure and they're making the jump to the Big 12 next year. And yeah, uh, shout out, shout out to him and, and what he's done for that program. So uh, I'm going to take the SMU Mustangs. I think this game is going to come down to Boston College loves to run the football. Uh, I do not think they're going to have the success to win this game on the ground against SMU. And I think SMU's offense, even with the backup quarterback, I think it's still too potent for this Boston College defense. I think SMU covers the spread here, and uh, and I like SMU, man. A 12-win season for the Mustangs, yeah. that's huge. huge. That, that, yeah, that is huge, very huge. Uh, I mean, and look, looking at SMU, I think – uh, you know, with everything that they've got outside of the quarterback position, this is one of those games where I think you can throw in your backup and still expect them to do well. Uh, and you've got you've got plenty of other playmakers around them. Um, but looking at at Boston College, with with them, uh, what's what's their quarterback's name? Castan Castellanos Castellano. or something like that. yeah, Castellano. Uh, yeah. He's he's been phenomenal. I think he's when I looked it up earlier, I think he's like forty three points away from uh, breaking a thousand rushing yards this year rushing yards as a quarterback. So, I mean, wow. that's that's really crazy. Uh, and so it just shows how much they love to run the ball. I do think Boston College keeps it closer than that 10-point spread, uh, barely, just because I think they're going to control a lot of the clock. But, uh, Jeremy, how are you feeling about this game? I'm in the same boat. I think for SMU, they're just going to have to – they're just going to stick to their game plan. It, like you said, you may not have your original starting quarterback, but next man up on the totem pole and just go out and show everyone what you're truly made of. And at the end of the day, just stick to your game plan. Don't let them control the running game. Just stop their running game and just go all out and show them what the Mustangs can really do and trample them. So I think I'm in the same boat as you, Josh, and you, Blake. I think it's going to be a closer game, but at the end of the day, if you have a quarterback that has almost a thousand yards rushing, that is just mind boggling, un- completely unheard of. I mean, unless you're Lamar Jackson, but that's about it. I mean, <laughs> I I don't know what else to really say. I mean, Boston College, I'll give you credit. Congratulations, make it this far for the bowl game. It's nice to see teams like these make these bowl games. But at the end of the day, I'm still sticking with all three of us, and we're all going with MS S. MU, excuse me. And I think it's going to be a pretty fun game, but still roll stanks. I'll go with MSU too. <laughs> yeah, that too. But, <laughs> well, let's go ahead and go on to the next one. We've got NC State versus Kansas State in the Pop Tarts Bowl. Have you guys seen the trophy for this one? Is it a thing of Pop Tarts? Yeah, it looks better than the college football playoff trophy. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. It's it's a sweet looking trophy, uh, and it's got the football on top, and it's got two slots up. cut out for Pop Tarts to fit in. That's crazy. Uh, and then I saw them saying something too. I don't know if it was a joke. But something about the Pop Tarts mascot being edible. 
Like oh, what? Wow. Part part of the part of the costume what? must be edible or something. Like what? 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 What's going on? I don't know. Okay, that um, was pretty. I, dumb. I I really hope that's a joke because that's. Be I don't gross. know that that might yeah that might be Who a really little. Wants to take a bite out of a mascot. That, that might be a little uh, un unfamily friendly. friendly. <laughs> <laughs> that might be over PG. That might be over PG thirteen here, ladies and gentlemen. But, but looking at this game, you know, you've got Will Howard opting out, and then like like you said, Blake, NC State doesn't have any of their quarterbacks left. Uh, you know, within the probably you know then the next three three uh recruiting classes they don't even have a next <laughs> next QB up from as many guys have, have left their their program uh you know and so you're gonna have Avery Johnson come in for the K-State Wildcats uh, you know, I think it's really weird for Will Howard to transfer out because you look at where K-State stands right now you're going into a Big 12 that loses the top two dogs you're already one of the top dogs in the Big 12 currently in the last really the last five to six years you've been a top dog a a a, a team that has a chance, a possibility to make it to the Big 12 championship game every year. And now it comes down to where there is no Oklahoma or Texas. And you've seen some other teams kind of struggle here down the stretch. So you've got a really good chance here with K-State to move forward. I don't really understand Will Howard's choice to leave. I think he should have stayed with K-State. I think this is really dumb of him to leave and try to go somewhere else. Um, and it looks like, I don't, I don't know if he ever did commit, but it looked like he was looking into USC. Uh, and so that just doesn't seem like a good fit to me. Uh, I guess go over there and try to have the, the QB whisperer work his magic on you and, and try to get you into the NFL or something. I don't, I don't think you're that kind of a quarterback though. So that was a little odd to me, but overall, I, I think I, I, when I'm, when I'm looking at these two, I think this is going to be one of those games that you don't want to touch, uh, as far as betting wise, because it's going to be two totally different teams than what you saw in the beginning of the season. You're going to have a lot of defensive guys that were sitting out for K-State. That does play a big role into this because K-State does have kind of a grimy defense. They're able to keep themselves in in games because of that defense. I think that the big guy, I forget his first name, but Savage, because he's got a a Savage last name. Uh, But, you know, (laughs) he's he's not going to be in the bowl game, I don't believe. So uh, there was quite a few guys. Uh, And so then NC State, I think they're over on – they're like they've got some sixth year quarterback coming in, uh, and so I, just looking at this overall, I think both teams this might, might be a really sloppy looking game, um, but ultimately they get to hold up a pretty cool looking trophy, get some pop tarts out of the deal, so you Hopefully can save they just those get the for the flavor they want. Yeah, get, you know, save save those. Uh, maybe as, as long as you get some brown sugar and strawberry, I feel like mm. I think you're doing all right. Um, but do, do the do the pop tarts get toasted for them before they they win the game? I doubt it. I doubt yeah. it. I don't. I don't. Then it, then it pop tart. I'm not. Boy. I'm not a big fan of untoasted pop tarts. I'll eat them, but you got to toast it. Yeah, you got to have. A, you got to have a glass of milk if if you're not going to toast it, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for yeah. sure. Josh, you're going to think I'm yeah. crazy. I've never toasted a pop tart. Really? Nope. You've never toasted, huh? man. You got to toast a pop tart, and then you will never eat an untoasted pop tart again. Really? I mean, I you just might throw them in the microwave for ten seconds. That's a good way too. I mean, if you got to do that, um, but popping it in the toaster. Puts nice and crispy on the outside, all warm and gooey on the inside. But hmm. man, I'm, I'm excited for this one just because I might, I might have like some some of those little pop tarts bites, uh, and, and throw those in a bowl and toast them up. <laughs> just start popping those instead of popcorn. But there you go. Uh, Jeremy, how you feeling about K State uh, and NC State? I guess I'll make my pick. I, I think I think K State wins this game. Yeah. Just because it's K State and NC State just hasn't really looked great all year, and now you're losing all your teams. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go K-State, but it's going to be one of those weird games. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be an absolutely different game, like you obviously said, that compared to the beginning of the year where we all we were kind of set in stone with how we all thought it was going to go. But then obviously with everyone opting out, then whatever the situation is, it's definitely going to be a complete flip of the switch for both teams. But at the end of the day, I'm still picking with um, I'm still picking K-State at the end of the day just because I think they're, they're still, uh, the significant team in my book. I mean, take it for granted, like I said, losing their their main people but at the end of the day like they're still able to manage to push through all those those little um those little bumps in the road and just find the way just to get get the dub on the board and put points on the board their defense just has got to play strong just because i mean looking against these teams i know obviously we're talking about bowl games but at the end like you look at this aspect you're going to see some things that the you may have not seen them do during the regular season so that easily could throw a monkey wrench into this type of situation but still for the most part i think 
it's going to be a pretty good game, but I, I still agree. I'm going with K-State at the end of the day. I'll probably hit the over at 47 and a half. Well, I think, what else I think is these, you I don't think these the two can, can hit 50 points, you know, especially with two sloppy defenses. Uh, I feel like you can squeeze in 50 points in this game. But, you know, so I might, I might, I might, I, you know, if I, if I had to. Um, and then there, there's also the big wide receiver that I wasn't thinking of for NC State, too, because he's got a cool last name, uh, Con- Conception or something like that. And, and he, he's he's one dude that I, I think I was reading on him. He's not opting out of the game. So hmm. uh, I guess there's one wow. offensive player over there. But I just feel like K-State can run the ball no matter who's back there. Is Brennan, is Brennan Armstrong, is he hurt or is he playing or – did he? I think he's. I, I'm, hurt. No, I'm. Pre- I'm I, I thought. I thought he was the one playing because he's the six-year quarterback that I was thinking of. Oh, he's okay. he's the one that I think is playing yeah. for them. I thought he was. Yeah, because I know that they had they had like a lot of stuff happen at quarterback this year, and like I think he started the year and then he went down and then they had another guy come in and then he quit like through the middle of the year, entered the portal or whatever, or said that he was going to enter the portal and then. Yeah, they've just had a mess, but somehow they won. They won five games in a row. So, like, I just I didn't know what they were like really doing at quarterback. And I, I, I don't know, man. Like this game, like Will Howard, I, I, I don't know what he was doing either. Because I've heard Miami, I've heard USC, but I'm just not sure, like, if that was the right decision to leave Kansas State because it. If you guys remember what Spencer Sanders did last year, I think like it kind of feels real similar to that situation where Spencer Sanders transferred to Ole Miss and he didn't even get to play his last year of eligibility. Um, so I don't know, man. Like this game, Kansas State usually, um, you know, they lean on their defense, but their offense, I'm just not sure if it's going to show up. Um and NC State, I just don't know what they're going to bring to the table on the offensive side of the ball either. But I'm going to take the Wolf Pack just because they've been hot, man. They're on a five game. They won five games in a row uh, to get to this point and get to a bowl game. And uh, give me the Wolf Pack in a sloppy, messy game. Like, what's the spread? Um, right now, it's sitting at Kansas State two and a half. Yeah, man. Give me, give me NC State money line. Love it. I think they're like plus one thirty five, I think, or something like that. Whenever I looked it up, so wow, yeah, yeah I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's, it it's close overall. Looking at it, I mean, I, I I think it can lean either way. It's just I think <clears> I'm going to go with the running team, and I I, I know K State's. Yeah. I, I don't care who they got back there. They're gonna they're gonna be able to, they'll, they'll pull a linebacker off the off the squad and run <laughs> yeah. in the middle yeah, if they have to. Kidding. So I mean, I just I, that's that's why I got to lean with them. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's 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 weird. Like I said, betting on any of these these bowl games, um, yep. but. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over. We've got Clemson and Kentucky in the Gator Bowl. This is one that you're going to have quite a few of the same guys all kind of jumping in, uh, and and they're going to be all, all in on this one because this is two teams uh, that that coming down to, to, to like down the stretch. You know, you've got two teams that really want to end on a, on a high note. You've got Clemson who only won eight games this year. They went eight and four, so they're not really feeling too confident about where they ended the season. They had a lot of drama going on in the season, all kinds of stuff like that. So, I mean, just lo- looking at, at, at Clemson, I think Clemson really wants to win this. I think uh, you've got, uh, I'm pretty sure Kate Klubnik is playing in this game. I don't know why he wouldn't, because uh, he's obviously coming back next year. Uh, so, I mean, you've, you've got him, I mean, you've got all, all the dudes around you. So, I mean, I, I think I think Clemson wants to win this more than Kentucky does, although Kentucky also having a bad season. Uh, being an SEC team is, is tough, but especially being an SEC team that can only win uh, seven games in a season, going seven and five. So this is one of those games. I think it's going to come down to it. It's going to be it's going to be fun. Uh, Clemson is going to be a four point favorite in this game. Uh, the total is set at forty four and a half. Wow! So uh, this is one in the Gator Bowl that. Uh, I, I feel like you have to pick Clemson because they just started off on such a rough note in, in the beginning of the season and worked their way to where they are. Um, but it, it could also be one of those those games where Kentucky just finds their run game and just runs it down Clemson's, Clemson's throat. But, uh, Blake, how are you feeling about Clemson and uh, Kentucky here in the Gator Bowl? Man, this is going to be a fantastic football game, I believe, and it all comes down to Devin Leary. Can Devin Leary make the plays down the field? We know Kentucky's going to try to establish the run. 
uh, Clemson's D-line. That's usually their bread and butter and what they pride themselves on. But Clemson's secondary can be sketchy at times, and that's what this game's going to come down to, in my opinion, is can Devin Leary make the plays down the field? Kentucky, uh, excuse me, Clemson's going to be motivated, man, because an 8-4 and four Clemson team, that is not what we've seen, and that's not the standard that Dabo Sweeney has set for that program. So we know both teams are going to come out motivated to play football. As far as a pick... Man, you really thought I was going to roll against the SEC? Get out of here. No, boy. Give me the Kentucky Wildcats. Yeah, I, kn- I knew you'd pick the SEC team there, but I don't know. It's just – I feel like Dabo is is frustrated. I think he wants to win this more than, than Stoops mm-hmm. does, really. You know, so I'm, I'm just looking at Clemson. I think they just want to win it more. Yeah. Uh, even though I, I feel like if I really have to take one of these two teams earlier on in the season, I'm probably taking Kentucky. Because I think mm-hmm. Kentucky is just a better overall team if they've got everybody in and, and playing full strength. Uh, so I, I think just this year, Clemson just hasn't looked good. I think they've had some some good games. And they've had some good games, especially down the stretch. Being able to turn it around from where, where they started, too. I mean, that's that's one thing you got to give uh, Dabo kind of hats off to him for for being able to turn the, turn the season around and getting not just to a bowl game, which everyone was kind of hoping, man, I hope they get to a bowl game, but then winning eight, eight games, you know, eight, eight win season, turn it in into a nine win season. But Jeremy, how are you feeling about the Gator bowl? This is definitely going to be a good one, but I mean, Blake said the best for Clemson. I mean, at the end of the day, like you got to give them credit for what they've done, but still, I'm not going to be just like Blake B be pretty predictable for a pick but i mean at the end of the day it's pretty obvious for i think we're all we all know who we're all going to pick is that and that's kentucky but i mean mm-hmm. at, at the end of the day i mean you just gotta look at the perspective and just it just seems like with how the last tail end of the season they just wanted it more and more and they just they just showed that we may have had a rough start to the beginning of the year but that that doesn't mean any that, that doesn't mean anything to us now and looking at this perspective i think they're just gonna have that same mentality and just come in and just be fighting and everything and just just stick to your game plan and just play smart and bring out the dub and hopefully you get your flavored pop tarts at the end of the situation yeah uh, yeah i mean looking at looking at this one i think uh I guess I'm the I'm the lone wolf. I'm 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 picking Clemson on this Whoa. one. But, uh, you know, so it's just yeah, I think I think Clemson pulls out the the win. It's mm. it's it's one of those those bowl games too. Where I think both teams kind of want it, but it's just drop. who wants it more. Uh, and that, that's what it's going to come down to. But uh, let's go ahead and go over to the Sun Bowl. We were just talking about the Sun Bowl earlier. How the, this one really doesn't matter a whole lot at all. Uh, this one's kind of a pointless bowl game. But you've got two ranked opponents battling it off. You've got Oregon State, who had a phenomenal season, uh, getting to where they are, and the Notre Dame, a, a, another team that didn't have the season everybody was kind of hoping for them too. I think they kind of let the wheels fall off the wagon a little bit down the stretch in the second half of the season and didn't pull off, you know, that loss against Louisville is really what was the dagger that kind of put an end to their season. It feels like, but uh, you, you've got a Notre Dame team who is going to be without quite a few guys. I think they've got a lot of guys going, they're opting out for the draft. Uh, they've had some guys, uh, you know, d- just transfer out and so they're not going to be there. Uh, I'm, I'm not even sure. I, I was trying to look look this one up before we started too, and this this is one I'm not really sure who's going to be in their their first starting quarterback. Because Sam Hartman, uh, I'm pretty sure he opted out. Yeah, I, I don't really know. But then over on the other side, you got Oregon State, who's probably in a worse position because they're without their head coach. They're uh, without two of their quarterbacks because Aiden Childs and DJU <coughs> both left. So uh, looking at at Oregon State, and I think there, I've I've seen quite a few other team or uh, other players from Oregon State transfer out because of the coach leaving. So there, yeah. there's a lot of question marks in this game. That's why I feel like I'm picking Notre Dame just because I feel like they probably have the most depth on their chart. Uh, you know, on on their depth chart. So I, th- I think they've got more depth than Oregon State ever would. So that's why I've got to roll with Notre Dame here. I like that. I like that, Josh. Um, more depth on their chart. I love. Yeah, they've it. got more depth on their one. chart. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, look, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just think Oregon State has too much to overcome here, man. They they lost the head coach and, and you know, both quarterbacks. And I just – they don't even know what conference they're going to be in next year, right? So, uh, just a debacle uh, at Oregon State. And look, let me tell you folks something, all right? I spent time in that state just a month ago. That state don't give a piss about Oregon State. You hear me? <laughs> don't give 
I mean, they do not care about Oregon State. There ain't even a sign on I-5 saying, hey, Oregon State football this way. All right? <laughs> Nothing. Wow. Do not care. Um, and, like, any sporting goods store me and my brother went into, there was – four walls full of green and they had this one little section in the middle and it might have had 10 Oregon State shirts and 10 hats on it and that was it and uh I, I think Oregon State's down bad right now man you got your doors blown off of you uh in the Civil War rivalry by the Oregon Ducks and uh you, like I said you don't even know what conference you're gonna be in so even though Notre Dame's got some guys sitting out I think Marcus Freeman is a hell of a head coach. I think he's going to do great things at Notre Dame. Uh, I think they have enough playmakers to get the job done here and uh, and uh, win this bowl game. So I hate it for Oregon State, but you're down bad right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I think I, I, I'm, I'm on the same boat too. I really like uh, I, I like Marcus Freeman a lot. I, I liked that that coaching hire. I liked everything about that, and I love him as a as a as a coach. His poise uh, and uh, him as a, as a as a leader, um, but Jeremy, how you feeling about Notre Dame going against Oregon State right now in the Sun Bowl? Oregon State, good luck this is why I really have to say for you guys. I mean, you you said it the best. I mean, they have a lot more depth in this situation, and they just yeah. if you're trying to compete against this this team where they have a lot more experienced depth guys in this type of situation, they know what they're going to be doing. They know when to do the right thing and not to do the wrong thing. And overall, I mean, you just good luck to Oregon state is all I can really just say, but all at the end of the day, tux, touchdown Jesus is just going to do his thing and he's just going to be rolling with Notre Dame. So let's just roll yeah. with Notre Dame here. I'm just going to make it short and sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I'm looking at it too. I'm not sure. Is there running back uh, estimate? Is, is he, is he expected to play? Uh, dude, I don't know. There's so many people opting out, opting they've, they've in. They've got a big, big dude Portland. at the uh, tight end too, that I like a lot. Uh, yeah. so, I mean, and you know, they've, they've got dudes all over the field. And like I said, they've just got uh, a, a deeper depth chart. So I mean, uh, it, it's just l- looking at looking at that depth chart. I think they've mm-hmm. they're just a team that they know how to recruit, uh, regardless of of the uh, the the, the extra oh, curriculum, oh, you know, the, or the, the extra uh, uh, kind of oh. academic expe- expectations that they have out of their players and everything too. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's 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 a tough team to beat, regardless. Uh, it looks <laughs> like Notre Dame is a six point favorite, six and a half on some books. Uh, so you know, just looking at, looking at them. Uh, they're sitting there. I, I don't know. I feel like this is going to be. I, I feel like that six that six points is kind of easy to take, yeah. even though they're going to be. It's going to be one of those coin flip kind of games. But I, I feel like I would. Generous. I feel like I would take that six and a half just because it's. I don't. I don't know what Oregon State has going for them right now. I, I don't. Whereas Notre Dame, at least you can look and say they're they're usually up towards the the top of the recruiting uh, recruiting rankings. Uh, they 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 know how to get guys out of the transfer portal. They uh, they just got a. a Riley Leonard out of the transfer Riley portal. Leonard. Yeah, that's true. So I mean, they, you know, they they get guys out of the transfer portal, uh, and so looking at looking at it, I just I don't I don't see any of that for Oregon State though. You know, Oregon no. State is dead. No, they're dead. They're there. They're they're just to be there. They're dead. Yeah. You drop the A and just capital D E D. They're dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> they're dead. dead. They don't they're even like know it. what conference they're playing in. Hey, and Josh, real quick. Uh, with Notre Dame, you know, if you want to start playing in the Sun Bowl, I'm sorry, I, I know a certain Notre Dame fan, and this is kind of, you know, a little jab at him. If you want to start playing in the Sun Bowl, dog, you need to lower those academic uh, standards. And I know that might sound crazy to some people. Uh, it might sound wild, but those academic standards are holding you back by a ton. And uh, uh, not being in a conference may may not be helping too much either. That's that's also true, brother. I, so, I do think uh, um, I do think bowl games come down to a lot of the bowl games are usually constructed around conferences, so yeah. it just makes yeah. common sense, as Fauci would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, I just join the Big Ten. Just join the Big Ten. I, I, I like that move. I like that move a lot. Uh, obviously, the ACC is out of the question now, oh, God, regardless. No. Uh, no matter, you know, I, I know that you know your basketball and baseball team is already over there in the ACC, so mm-hmm. you just jump in there. No, it, it doesn't matter anymore. They're they're yeah. They're a dumpster fire. They would they're... never join the SEC. No, 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 no. Not they wouldn't. No. Well, they're they're too north too. I don't think the SEC would accept a northern team into the southeastern conference. I think the SEC prides themselves on being a south, you know, a south Southeast. based yeah. uh, conference. Yeah. 
Yeah, we don't want them down here anyway. But if the no. invitation ever went to South Bend, I think they would shred it up and uh, <laughs> put that baby in the trash. SEC, uh, yeah, I think uh, we're just going to do away with our football team. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. All right, let's jump over because another team that is dead, D-E-D. Dead. <laughs> You've got Maryland. Not not, not going to be doing so hot against your Auburn Tigers. Uh, looking at this one, obviously another another bowl game. We're going to have quite a few opt outs, really on both sides of the ball. Uh, it's 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 a shame too because both of these schools. I think going forward, I I feel like this is one of them. Uh, you know, for for Auburn going forward, you've got a, a new uh, first year head coach with with Hugh Freeze coming in, and and so just finish what you started. That that's that's really all. That me, if, I, if I'm the first year head coach, I'm just asking you to finish what we started. We started this season off together, uh, or we, we started it off together. Let's finish it together, and that's that's all I'm asking for you. And so, looking at this game, th- this is just it's a shame to see a team uh, like Auburn or even even Maryland. You know, Maryland started off really hot this year. They went and got clobbered by Ohio State in the second half, and then just went downhill since then. Uh, barely made it to a bowl game, really. Uh, I, I know they're seven and five, but it was it was close for them to be, be able to get those last couple of wins mm-hmm. to push them across into the bowl eligibility. Yeah. Uh, and then for Auburn, you know, it's just there's there was some disappointing disappointing games like New Mexico State uh, or even Georgia. that the way that it, it's it's not that you lost to Alabama because nobody faults them for losing to Alabama, but it's that you lost the way that you did. Uh, you know, and I was kind of laughing because uh, uh, it was Blaine. Blaine Crane said something on on uh, Crane and Company about you know uh, you know can't you just learn how to lose <laughs> you know can you just lose the right way yeah, uh, you know and it's just th- that's one of those games that you would rather them get blown out the way they did in New Mexico State than to get that close to victory uh, and then you know blow it so looking at this overall though I think I think Hugh Freeze wants a bowl victory I think that is big for the the program right now I think that's really big for what they've got going forward and bringing in a lot of new guys of obviously that we've talked about a top 10 recruiting class that's huge so seeing that with Auburn going forward uh, and then now you know going against a Maryland team who doesn't have near the physicality near the size that Auburn does I think Auburn can just run the ball keep it clean and, and just handle business I don't think they really have to do too much but with that being said uh, it is a game where you know we would have expected Auburn to have won some of the other games uh, that they didn't and maybe win other games better uh, than they did and so uh, it's it's kind of a, a toss in the air for what what Auburn team you're going to see but I'm going to pick Auburn I think they end up winning in this game I think they cover that seven point spread right now too um, Blake how you feeling about your Auburn Tigers Oh, you know, we got a couple opt-outs on defense. Marcus Harris, DJ James, uh, Nehemiah Pritchett. You know, hey, go enter the draft. Go make your money. I don't really agree with it, but, you know, I get it. Like I said earlier, I get it. Uh, That's where we're at in today's time. But um, I think we're going to be okay, man. We've got some young cats Mm -hmm. in that secondary. Uh, We got Keontae Scott. He announced he's returning next year. Uh, at the linebacker position, we got Austin Keys returning. Um, we've got uh, Eugene Asante returning. That was a that was a big time, big time get to come back. Uh, and and you know I, I think we're going to be okay on the defensive side of the ball. It's it's losing Marcus Harris hurt uh, for this game, but he's going on to bigger and better things, right? So I look over at the offensive side of the ball for Auburn, and it's Peyton Thorn time, man. Like, you have the keys. Auburn is not going after a portal quarterback. They want to see Peyton Thorne uh, make a make make progress and going into year two. And I think this is going to start it right here Saturday is you're going to have the opportunity to go in and claim the QB1 spot. And I think Auburn is going to try to run the football with their three-headed monster uh, tailback room and, you know, could have a fourth monster in there, but Jeremiah Cobb's still a baby. And yeah, you're going to be limited. You're you're going to be limited at the wide receiver position because you had uh, Var opt out, and he's in the portal and everything. And then uh, you had a couple of other guys like Amari Kelly and MJJ and all of that. But you had Rivaldo Fairweather. He said that he's he's opting in and returning next year. So uh, that's a big big time keep at the tight end position. And then you're bringing in you know, the the five-star wide receivers uh, in the freshman class. So we might struggle at wide out Saturday, but I still think we have enough playmakers to get it done against Maryland. 
Now, if we were playing an upper echelon team, I, you know, it would be a little different. I would be extremely nervous. But Talia Tungavaloa is not playing in this game, and I think that is the key uh, in this matchup. If he was playing in this game, I would be a little nervous. Uh, but I think Auburn covers the spread, man. I, I think Auburn wins this game by 10. Uh, and hopefully they're up big enough to where we can see some of those young guys, some of those future key contributors get in this ball game. Do you think does does Tulia does he go to the NFL? Do you think he, he makes it in the NFL? Nah, man, a real estate agent, in Miami. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't see NFL talent out of him. No, but Jeremy, how are you feeling about the Maryland Turpin ter, Terrapins against? Uh, Turtles. You know, yeah, the, the little, little turtle terrible. against the Auburn Tigers. <laughs> uh, They're a turtle. This, I, I like this one. Just, I really want Auburn to win this so bad just because, mm. like you, Josh, said it, and Blake, you've obviously witnessed it. We've all witnessed it. There's so many games that Auburn's came so close to winning and then just not being able to finish it out. Then yeah. I, I really do think this is the moment in time to where Auburn's going to fully – fully get their game going like obviously not having uh to his brother at the quarterback position for maryland that's going to be a big thing because i can believe space the fact off that he's not going to be playing then i was originally thinking that this was going to be a rough game for auburn but then uh, i'm glad you said that just because that he's not going to be playing that i'm thinking okay this is going to be a a really good chance for Auburn to to pull this out. Then I I really do. Like I said, I want Auburn to win this just because I felt bad for Blake this whole this whole season because there's been so many games that there's been yeah. I've put some money on for Auburn just because I feel really confident in Auburn. And then unfortunately, it just, it just doesn't go the way. I mean, unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes in college football. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it, I want. I'm just gonna be repetitive. I want Auburn to win this just because I've been up ever since I've met Blake. I've become I've become a little bit more of an Auburn fan each week and just listening to the podcast. Then it's been really fun just listening to Auburn, just learning a lot about Auburn. Then it's I'm gonna I'm gonna pr- throw this out there. My fiance, whenever she sees Maryland play, it's the Terps. She calls them the turds. <laughs> then it's it's always been a yeah, funny the turds. The yeah, turtles. the turds. turds. And I'm like, turds. no, it's the turps. She's like, no, it's the turds. I'm like, okay, you can call them whatever you want, but <laughs> at the end of the day, we're all used to hearing them being the turps. Now I'm just never going to get turds out of my head. So let's well, roll Auburn. And and I told you uh, earlier on in the season, I just feel like you're you're just you're just a year behind where Oklahoma is right now. You know, and and the good thing with that with for Auburn is that. Uh, next year would be much like what we saw with Oklahoma, the progression that you saw into year two, but Oklahoma is going to have a little step back because of going into the sec. So therefore, you know, you and I are going to be really close to this, to the same step now yeah. uh, in the process, because you guys have already adjusted. You're, or you're already, uh, you, you started off that year one in the sec. So mm-hmm. uh, you, you've been a little more battle tested than we are. So I, th- I think there's good things coming. I like Hugh freeze a lot. I like what he's freeze bringing right. to the program. Uh, and, and I think, I think a big win uh, would really help. And I think with the, the only thing with Tulia being in the game, if he was in the game, that's just a dude that can sling the ball around. He can sling the rock. Uh, and then, you know, with, with they've got a lot of speed. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing that I would see as a mismatch against Auburn. But ultimately, I, like I said, Auburn's just big. They're tough. I don't think they can go down Run games uh, are strong. To, to Maryland of all teams. Mm-hmm. You know, so if, if you were going against Penn State, uh, or oh you know, let's Michigan let's pick on really. let's pick on maybe a smaller Big Ten team or even a Big Big Twelve. If you were, let's say that uh, Texas Tech, <laughs> Texas yeah. Tech, I would feel a little more concerned than Maryland. Maryland's just small. You know, they yeah. don't they don't have those big boys. Like Texas Tech would at least have some big guys that could that could muscle their way through and 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 have a little bit of a fight. Yeah, but, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, now looking looking down through these this list though there's a lot more to get to uh, that we that we could get to but that's all the bowl games that we're going to talk about for now it's hard talking about these because again you've got teams it's it's basically like week one all over again trying Literally. to guess yeah. what's going to happen with these teams because of the the opt outs and transfers and uh, it's just silly and, and we were talking about that how how silly it is to even have the transfer portal open right now mm-hmm. you said it was Lane Kiffin brought that up yeah Lane Kiffin said that uh, I didn't it's just I didn't either. It's just uh, a crazy that you're still playing games in your season and the transfer portal is open. And there's kids even entering the transfer portal and still playing in the bowl game. 
Yeah. Like, well, that's and, and like Malik Murphy, you know, I feel bad for the dude because like, what are you supposed to do? You know, you, you, yeah. you have to get your foot in the door or else all of these recruits are going to step in and take the starting positions or the other guys that don't care about their bowl games, mm-hmm. but you still want to go finish off the season. And, and oh, they kind of acted like they didn't want him to finish the season off with them and go to the bowl game with them. That's, that's yeah. a crappy situation. And you want to be there. You were the guy that helped them get there. So exactly. it, it's, it, it sucks. And he was put in a, a really tough spot and I feel bad for the kid. And now if Quinn gets hurt, you're going to see Arch Manning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, tough, tough. So, I mean, it, it's just weird, man. There's there's a lot of things that they have to work on with NIL and then the transfer portal. And 100%. I feel like they just took a step backwards with allowing a second transfer. I just – the NCAA mm-hmm. is a disaster, man. It's, it, it is. They're, they're crap. Uh, it's a disaster. And uh, I just feel like – I just feel like college football has lost its glamour. And when I was a kid, man, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was a kid, you you grew up having to be almost perfect to win a national championship. And now you're allowing 12 teams in a playoff, and they're talking about, well, even if you lose three games, you you can still squeeze into the playoffs. It's It's just the more and more you look at it, it just feels like it's going more and more towards the NFL because NIL isn't being used for name, image, and likeness anymore. It's being used for recruiting purposes. So you're offering kids a million to $2 million out of the transfer portal, and you're offering high school kids that money to come to your school and everything like that. I, that's not what it was created for. It was created for guys to reach out and, and say, hey, look, Celsius Energy Drinks. Let's partner up and and let's make a commercial like Bo Nix does or, you know, Subway or whatever, man. Like now you're just you're having all these boosters just file money into this school and they're getting kids to come to the school and everything. It's just it's weird, man. There's a lot of things they need to iron out because I'm a huge fan of NIL. I do believe that payer, uh, players should be paid. Yeah, 100%. But they need to they need to get back to the right way. And a lot of Auburn fans have gotten on me because they're like, Blake, why aren't we going after a portal quarterback? And I'm like, Auburn's not going to spend a million dollars on a guy like Cam Ward that, to come what, in and play 12 games. That's what Matt Rule's talking about. You know, yes. like we want to get a new quarterback. You know, we, we need a quarterback, well, obviously. Yeah, you know, that, that was that was apparent throughout the entire season. There was no hiding that. There wasn't like Matt Rule was like, oh, we're fine in the quarterback room. I don't know what you're talking about. He said, no, we're, we're working with what we got. Mm-hmm. And how are you supposed to get anything else in? You get you get Jeff Sims to transfer in. That's the kind of that's the the caliper of quarterback you get to transfer in yep. when when you can't afford the multi million dollar quarterback coming in. That's just right. it's ridiculous. And even Dylan Riola signed something like a over seven hundred thousand dollar per year deal uh, nil deal a, a, a fresh fresh face in, into college football. So it's just yep. it's crazy. It it is. It's getting out of hand. I think the the transfer portal getting out of hand and the nil kind of mashing those together makes even more chaos. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's it's creating times like like this right now where I want to be excited about all of these games. There's so many so many matchups where you look at the teams and it could be such a fun matchup, but it gets taken away. Mizzou Ohio State could be a, such a fun matchup, but then you you take it away because you have guys opting out. You have guys that are, that are just don't want to play in their, their game because they're too valuable for to play and, and finish out the game. And it, you're right. It, it's, it's coming into kind of like a mini NFL and uh, it, it's a shame to see the, the game, the game go that way, but mm-hmm. that's pretty much all we've got for today. Uh, we thank you all so much for watching, for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, we want you to hit that subscribe button. That helps us out. You can also hit that like button, another way to help us over on YouTube and uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to, to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. That is the best way to help us over on those platforms. And obviously, as always, please go follow us on social media. We've got Facebook, Instagram, X, uh, TikTok, all that kind of fun stuff. So go follow us over there and show us some support. We thank you all so much for tuning in with us. And until next time.